Okay, so in this problem, we're told to find the tension in the two wires supporting the traffic light shown in this figure. So what you have is something that looks like this. So we have this traffic, uh, traffic light hanging down from these two cords. Uh, and we're also given the mass of uh, this traffic light. And so what we're trying to find is the tension in both these cords. So they're going to be like this. And I'm going to call this one TA, the tension in cord A. So this is cord A. And this one is TB, so the tension in cord B. And so what we're trying to do is find both of these. So uh, let's just go ahead and write it like this. And so how are we going to solve this problem? So uh, basically what we're going to be doing is summing the forces in each direction. And then when we do that, we're going to be able to sub one of the equations uh, in order to solve for one. And then, yeah, so that's basically it. So we're going to start by summing the forces in the x direction. So when I'm referring to the x, just know that I'm talking about this direction. So any force acting along this way, so this way or this way. And then when I talk about the y, I'm talking about forces this way or this way. So when I sum the forces in the x direction, I know that it's going to be equal to zero. The reason this is because this thing isn't moving. And so the forces that point in this direction have to be equal to the forces in this uh, pointing to the left. And if it doesn't, right, it would move. But since they're the same, we know this thing isn't moving, so they have to be equal to each other. So since these are going to be equal to zero, what we want to find is the x components of TB and TA. And I know that they're going to have to be equal to each other, right? Because if not, it would be moving. So what we want to do now is find the x components of TA and TB. So let's go ahead and do that. So how do we do that? So uh, I think it's easier if we draw the triangles like this. So kind of look at it like this. Let me draw it like that. Something like that. And I'm going to find what these angles are just because they make it easier for me to see. Um, but if this is 27 degrees, uh, you should know that this is also going to be 27 degrees. So this right here is 27 degrees. Uh, and then this right here is going to be 53 degrees. Right, because this would be 90. And then 90 plus 53. Right, if you do that, it's 143. Or it should be 143. Uh, and then 180 minus that is 37. So this would be 37. And then that means... Uh, that's where you get the 53 right there because 37 plus 53 is uh, 90. So uh, now that we have the angles there, let's find the x components. So we know that this, if you imagine this like a triangle, this side and this side are the x components. Uh, and then this side, right, this and this are the y components. So uh, what we want to find are the x components. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just redrawing the triangle. But here, so this is TB, this is your X component, and this is your Y. Uh, to find the X component, uh, let me draw on the angle too. So this is 27 degrees. Uh, to find the X, you're just going to use trig. So uh, you should know the cosine of an angle at this point. In this case, we're dealing with 27 degrees. Uh, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is our X component divided by TB. And then if I multiply both sides by TB, I get my X component. So this x component right here, or the x component of TB, is TB times the cosine of 27. So what I'm doing is summing up the forces. So I'm going to add the x component and the x component from this. Uh, if it's going to the right, though, you want to label it positive. So when I add it, TB is going to the right, or the x component is, right? Because if it's going up like this, it's obviously going to the right. Um, so it's TB cos of 27. And then what I'm going to do is now find the x component of this. Uh, so it's going to be the same exact thing. Uh, you do use cosine for the x component here, since this is the adjacent side. So it's just going to be TA cosine, but instead of 27 degrees, it's now just 53. Uh, but keep in mind, it's going to be minus this. The reason is because this one's pointing to the left. And so if it goes to the left, it's negative. If it's to the right, it's positive. And so you have this equation right here. Let me get it off. But basically, this tells us TB cosine of 27 is going to be equal to, right, just moving it to the other side, just adding it, is equal to TA cosine of 53, right? And this is, uh, uh, this is exactly what I said earlier, that the X component of TB has to be equal to TA. I was just showing you how we find it by summing the forces. Um, but they have to be equal or else this thing would move. But obviously it's not. So TB, equals, or TB cosine of 27 equals TA cosine of 53. Now what we want to do is just solve for one of them. I'm going to solve for TA. So TA equals TB cosine of 27 
divided by the cosine of 53. Uh, now what I'm going to do is plug this in my calculator to simplify it. So you have the cosine of 27 divided by the cosine of 53. Uh, and what you get is TA equals 1.48, what does it say, 1.4805 TB. So it's going to be 1.48 times TB. Now what we're going to do is use this in order to plug in uh, for the next equation uh, where we sum, in, sum the forces in the y. So we just did the x. Now we know the y. And so if you think about this one, the x components had to be equal. But in the y, we know that these two forces, the y, com the y components of the two tensions, have to be equal to mg. Because these two are canceling, uh, or got to be equal to this in the y, or else it would be moving in the y. So the y component of this plus the y component of this has to be equal to this. Uh, but you'll see that when we uh, sum the forces in the y. So once again, they equal 0 because this is a static problem. It's not moving. 0 equals. And now we want to find is the y component or the y, the forces acting in the y. So I probably should have drawn the mg before, but you know there's a force mg acting straight down. Uh, that's just the force due to gravity. So any object uh, just gets pulled down as a result of gravity, uh, which is just mg. Um, and then how do we find the y components of TA and TB? So if you look here, instead of using cosine, you're just going to use sine. So uh, I'll show you it for TB, and then I'll just write it out for TA. But uh, The sine of this angle is 27. You should know from trig, uh, the sine is opposite, opposite the angle, which is y, over the hypotenuse. So y over TB, multiplying both sides you get y is tb sine of 27. Um, and then obviously ta is just the same thing, but with a different angle. So ta uh, sine of 27. Or sorry, not 27, 53. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so uh, if it goes upwards, you want to label it positive. If it goes downwards, you want to label it negative. So just like I said, the right was positive for the x, upwards is positive and downwards is negative. So... We have to add up both y components since we're summing the forces in the y direction. So we have TB sine of 27 plus TA sine of this angle, 53. Since they're both upwards, notice the reason this one was negative, TA, was because it was to the left. But this one points up. Both of these point up. And then we have to minus uh, MG. Right? Because when you sum the forces in the y, you're only looking at the forces in the y direction, which would be mg, and then the two y components of these forces. Just like in the x, we only looked at the x components, and mg doesn't have an x component. It's only in the y. So that's why we don't have to do that for this part, the, summing the forces in the x. Um, and then, yeah, so now it's just a matter of simplifying and plugging things in. Uh, you would move mg to the other side. So mg equals ta sine... 27 or sorry tb sine of 27 that's my fault tb sine of 27 plus ta sine of 53 uh, and then this is what i said before right the two y components here have to be equal to the mg or else it would be moving right so that's just how we got that um and then now what i want to do is uh i'm gonna i'm just gonna simplify this so uh, the mass of our light here is 33 kilograms. Uh, and then G is just a constant. So the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, which is a constant. Uh, and then it's going to be equal to, let me find what the sine of 27 is. It is 0.45, we'll just say 40 TB. Plus, and then let's find the sine of 53 now. Plus 0.7986 TA. And so now what we're going to do is plug in uh, TA, and then we'll be able to solve for TB. So 33 times 9.8, that's 323.4, equals 0 0.4540 TB plus 0.7986, and now I'm going to plug in TA. So TA was 1.4805 TB, 
Make sure I got that right. Okay. Uh, and then 0. 0.7986 times 1.4805. Let me just rewrite the whole equation. So all I'm doing is multiplying these two values together. Plus, and then when you multiply those, you get 1.182. And so keep in mind, it's going to be a little off since I'm just basically simplifying the values here. If you want the exact answer, you can just uh, leave them in their forms and solve, but it's just easier if I do it this way. Um, 1.182 TB, and then I'm going to add these two terms uh, to get TB by itself, right? 1.182 plus 0 0.4540. So you get 323.4 equals 1.636. We'll just leave it like that, TB. Dividing. So you get 323.4 divided by 1.636. Yeah, so TB is 197.677. Uh, and then to get TA, you would just multiply by 1.4805. So TA equals 1.4, what would I say? 1.4805, okay. And so keep in mind this is Newton since we're dealing with a force here. The force is measured in Newtons. So times 1.4805, you get TA is equal to 292.66 Newtons. So as I said before, TA is this one right here, right? So this, and then this is TB. So we just solve for what their tensions were. So your TA is right here. Uh, your TB is right here. You can choose to round whoever you'd like. Um, but yeah, so those are going to be your two answers. Uh, yeah, so these are going to be your two answers. Uh, and then, yeah, so just keep in mind how we did this. All we did was uh, just sum the forces in each direction and then just plug in. So pretty simple. Uh, but yeah, so these are your two answers. And hopefully you found this video useful.